notice in the topology on screen that client one has a couple of different ways to get to server one. It's going to go down to its default gateway of R1, and then it could go either over a fast Ethernet connection down to BB2 and then out to server one, or it could go over a WAN link down to BB1 and then out to server one. And I'm running EIGRP on the routers, and EIGRP is going to prefer that fast Ethernet link. And we can confirm that with the traceroute command. Let's do a trace route and specify the IP address of server one. It's 198.51.100.3. Which way do we go? Well, we see that our first hop is down to R1. That's our default gateway. But then which way do we go? R1 is then going to go to 203.0.113.5. That's BB2. That's over the fast Ethernet link as we predicted. And then we go out to server one at 198.51.100.3. Let's now use this topology to demonstrate how PBR, policy-based routing, can be used to influence a routing decision. What we're going to do is convince R1 that traffic from client 1 to server 1 should go over the WAN link instead of over the fast Ethernet link. Let's go to router R1, and we begin by creating an access list that defines the traffic that we want to treat differently, that we want to be subject to policy-based routing. Let's go into global configuration mode, and let's create an access list numbered 100 and I just want to match traffic going from client one to server one. So I will say permit IP host and specify the IP address of client one. It's 192.0.2.2. And now I'm going to say host and specify the IP address of server one, which is 198.51.100.3. We've now created an access list that's going to match traffic from client one to server one. Now let's create a route map that matches that traffic. We'll say route hyphen map. Let's give it a name of client one hyphen two server one. Now in route map configuration mode, I can say that I want to match, in this case, the IP address as defined by access control list 100. What do I want to do with this matched traffic? Well, I could set an egress interface or I could set a next hop IP address. That's what I'm gonna do here. I'm gonna say set IP next hyphen hop and specify a next hop IP address of 203.0.113.1. That's going to be BB1, available over the WAN link. Now that we've created the route map, we need to apply it to interface fast Ethernet 0 slash 0 on R1. That's going to be receiving the traffic coming in from client 1. Let's go into interface fast Ethernet 0 slash 0, and here's how we apply that route map. We say IP policy route hyphen map, and we give the route map name, which is client one hyphen to hyphen server one and we're done let's go back to client one and do another trace route remember before this second hop was to 203.0.113.5 that was bb2 now let's see if that second hop is going to be to 203.113.1 that's going to be over the wan link to bb1 let's issue that trace route command again and look at this now we're going to bb1 over the WAN link, it's not preferable based on the IP routing table, but that's what policy-based routing can do. It can override the routing table decision based on a policy that we define. We can get information about a route map that's configured on a router by simply saying show route hyphen map, and this is going to tell us what does this route map do. It matches IP addresses as defined by access list 100, and it's going to be setting the next top IP address to this IP address on BB1, and we even see that we've had some matching traffic to which this policy has been applied. And that's a look at how we can use PBR, policy-based routing, to override routing decisions based on an IP routing table.